Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and tonight we're talking to Alice Hoffman, author of The Red Garden. We sat down at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park and discussed writing, magic, and the importance of giving yourself deadlines. Enjoy. I think people are haunted. They're haunted by the past. They're haunted by the things they've done. They're, they're haunted by the things their people and their families have done years before they even were born. I think, you know, um, the past stays with us. And I, you know, it's not necessarily about, you know, ghosts that say boo or Casper type ghosts, but it's about the ghosts of the past that really stay with us. I know that I love uh, fairy tales and folk tales, and I, I grew up reading a lot of fantasy and science fiction, and, and I think that magic is just an integral part of literature for me. When I think of literature long term, I think, you know, magic is, is threaded through it. Why is that, do you think? Aside from the fact that there are fairy tales and folk tales. Well, I think it's a way, I think, you know, fiction and literature is a way to try to explain the world to ourselves. And, you know, whether it's spiritual or religious or magical, it, it's, it's kind of a way of trying to answer certain questions. I wanted to write about a town where there was a bookstore where people brought stories, the stories of their lives. Or, and it, after ri working on it for a while as a novel, I realized it was, I was really writing a book of Link's short stories. And I love Link's short stories, so I thought, well, I'm just going to go with this and see what happens. And, you know, it, it took place over 300 years. I didn't start at the beginning. I kind of started in the middle and then went all over time. But I thought what was interesting is that, for me, what happened kind of naturally, and I think this happens really in small towns or in history, is that what starts out as very intimate and personal becomes history and then becomes mythology. Yes. You know, so that the, you know, at one point this little girl drowns, she becomes a story that everybody talks about, then she becomes a play, and they put on the play about her every, every year. And I, I just thought it's so interesting how things morph in a town and how things change. I think beginnings are much more difficult than endings because I think if you if you do it if the beginning right then it will naturally gravitate to the right ending and that you you might plan it and it might go in the direction you thought it would go but eventually it's going to go to the right place and you almost don't have to even try if you if you get it right at the beginning so I think beginnings are much more difficult I think they are very important I think they are very important but they there's something that for me just kind of comes with it you know, the story goes to the right point somehow. Right. So you let it. I let it go. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, I think sometimes people try to force it. And I know when I ever I try to force something, it just it feels so heavy. It feels like you have to take the characters and pick them up and move them around. It just doesn't feel right. When I feel, you know, like I'm not getting it or it's horrible or whatever, I don't read it for a while. Because I think it's so, for me, and probably for lots of people, I'm so self-critical that I'm so quick to like just throw it out. So I think it's a good idea to just write 50 pages or try to write 100 pages and not look at it until you're more removed from it and then change it or whatever, but not to have that initial response of just throwing it in the garbage. Um, I, I also think for me it's, it's important to, to kind of make outlines and do the initial work first, which is, you know, just very personal and... Um, just trying to get the mood of it, almost like I make almost like mood boards um, for it. And uh, you know, I just finished another book actually that's coming out in October. That was an extremely difficult book for me, a very historical book, and um, had to do a lot of research. And I really, um, you know, I just I just kept doing it. I I felt like giving up many times, but I, you know, there's some there's something about getting to the end of the story. You know, both as a reader and as a writer. You know, the way you don't want to put down a book before you get to the end. I mean, I feel the same way writing as I do as a reader. I, I've got to get to the end of the story. One thing that I really think is a good thing to do is to be in some sort of writer's group or in a workshop. Because you're not so alienated and alone. You have other voices. You have other people that you can... You have... It's, I don't know, there's a loneliness about writing. And I think, you know... I think it's also good to have deadlines, and, and if you're in a, some sort of group or some sort of class, then you have the deadline and you have to write for that deadline. You have to choose who your readers are because everyone basically will tell you something else, and a lot of times people have their own agendas, and they're, they're talking about their work, not your work. So, you know, I think you have to be very careful about who you show your work to. Do you ever read people's stuff? Never. Never. Yeah, I, 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 I will not read anything that's not been published. Because I'm, I'm not that good at it. I, I, um, 
And also, I think it's very important to have a cheerleader and to have to not have somebody crush you when you're working. And um, so, I, for me, I never do.